this movie, we'll introduce the basics of how to create a Java unit test. We'll use the JUnit framework and a simple tic-tac-toc game for our example. This is how the game looks. Users click the square in turns, and after each click, a symbol, a note or a cross, is displayed but also stored in a map. There might be a winner or eventually the session might end as a draw. This is decided by calling a Java method each time the user clicks inside the square. It is therefore essential to test if that method works as expected in various situations. In order to write and run JUnit test, the JUnit dependencies must be provided to the build tool. Here, Maven is used and the JUnit jars are engaged by adding JUnit Jupyter API and the JUnit Jupyter engine within the dependency fragments of the pomxml file. The version should then be declared in properties fragment. The essential logic of this game is contained in a board class, namely in a method called checkline. This method takes an argument as integers for argument and returns boolean. The array indicates the squares which are being checked and relates to the map where the symbols are stored after each click. The method attempts to fetch the content from the map and stores it in three strings, handling the situation in which not all squares along a given line are checked. It then checks if those three strings are not empty and farther if they are identical, returning true or false depending on the situation. A test class should be written in the package hierarchy which corresponds to the code being tested. This is an important housekeeping rule in order to allow the IDE, in this case IntelliJ, to map the source code corresponding to the unit test code. Note the colors of the folders to the left side blue for the source code and green for the unit test code. In this case, a board test class is written and contains two method tests for the checkline method. They can be as many method tests as the user considers necessary, but they need to have different names. Here there is a test for a situation when the checkline method is expected to return true and below when the checkline method is expected to return false. Use the test annotation to indicate that the following Java code is part of a suite of unit tests. This indicates that this is to be run at later stage after the source code is compiled. It is instructive to write a method test in the arrange act sequence. Arrange contains all field declarations and initialization required. In this case, a map is created and three key value pairs are inserted. Also, a board object is initialized with a map as argument. Act is where the method being tested is called, in this case, with indices 0, 4 and 8, which correspond to the first diagonal, top left to bottom right. Finally, the assert section does the assertion. In this case, we assume that the return value of the checkline method will be true. A similar setup is used for the other method test with the difference that the expected return of the checkline method is false. Now click on the gutter item and run all tests in this class. As expected, the two tests pass. That was a basic introduction into how to structure and write a Java unit test. For more information on Java unit testing with dcover, please visit diffblue.com.